Alrighty then, good afternoon everybody, uh, Silver Dragon here, coming at you with an interesting little game that just released on uh, Steam, Adam, or the Ancient Domains of Mystery. Now, Adam is actually a uh, game, or a roguelike I should say, that has been in development for quite a long time, very similar to Dwarf Fortress in that aspect, where uh, it was initially started up in uh, 1994, and has been slowly just added and piled on over time. Uh, it has a whole bunch of different options to it. We can switch between ASCII or the graphical modes at any time. There's 431 different monsters, uh, 738 different items with hundred thousand, you know, hundreds of thousands of variants, 12 playable races, 22 character professions, 100 character talents, 47 spells, 41 skills, 35 corruption effects, uh, 3 different alignments with 7 degrees, and 13 different ways to end the game, which is fantastic. Hundreds of randomized dungeons, and of course all sorts of other fantasticness. Now there is still a free version of this on their site that you can pick up and uh, have a go with. Uh, but this one does come with a lot of really uh, cool bits and bobs as well. So I would, I personally I would support the uh, the de development of the game. So pick, definitely pick it up on Steam if you're interested. It is currently going for, uh, what is it, 15? Let me check the store page here again. I think it's 10%. So yeah, fifteen twenty nine. Oh, why did you have to change to Canadian? We're we our dollar is so shit right now. <laughs> or uh, sixteen ninety nine after November the twenty third. Now settings wise, we do have some fairly simple settings: full screen on and off resolution uh, to change to window size or stay fixed. I like to keep it uh, changed. Apply exit audio settings pretty basic music SFX. Game settings, here we can change the display type to tiles, mini tiles, double tiles, ASCII, whatever it happens to be. We can also change the mini-map mode. And actually, let me... Let's increase the mini-map size. What was it initially? Let's say 8 width by... 6 height. I tend to go 8x8, eight eight, but 8x6 eight sounds good. Let's apply that. Expert settings. Now this is interesting. So Adam uses Necklace of the Eye, or Not Eye, which is a roguelike framework. It can be used as a library for developing new roguelikes or enriching old ones. Uh, act as a front end for console or uh, limit cod roguelikes, whatever that is anyway. Lots of uh, fancy graphical modes, the classic DOS uh, ASCII, uh, tiles, FPP, TPP, isometric, fantastic isometric, love isometric. Looks really cool at times. Uh, smooth movement of sprites, recording and viewing videos, live streaming, all that good stuff. Adam is using NotEye under a formal GPL licensing exception, allowing Adam and NotEye to be bound together without Adam having to abide by the GPL. Fantastic. All right, let's exit back here. So basically, you don't want to be tweaking that unless you really know what's going down. Credits. So here we have the fabulous creator, Thomas Biskip. The architect and developer. The creator of uh, Not I should be here somewhere. There it is. Zeno Rogue is the Not I wizard. Uh, Lucas is the sound director. And uh, I cannot even begin to pronounce that is the art director. There's also more detailed credits, but we'll go on to that later. And then, of course, we have the manual. Now, you can access this in-game as well, and it is very important to know. Especially the standard commands and movement, as you're going to be needing a lot of this. Now, typically for movement, all I really do is move in a direction using the numpad. So, 7, 8, 9, 4, 6, 1, 2, 3 to move in a direction. And then 5 to pass turns. Now, let's go ahead and do a new game. I'm going to skip the tutorial. We're going to generate a brand new character. There's also a weekly challenge. So every week we will have a new challenge that we can go through for a high score, basically. We only have one shot at doing it. But yeah. And you can hit question mark on it to see what the challenge is. In the week of 46 of the year 2015, you'll be playing as a Gnomish Paladin born under the sign of the sword with the following additional challenges. You will grow hungry very slowly. There will be very few vaults. Talents are predetermined. You'll be playing as a male character. Initial attribute scores will be the same for everyone. 
Here's the Atom uh, Geek Code. I believe you can enter this in in order to try this kind of setup out before trying to go for this high score. We have Exploration Mode, Crowd Modes. We have a whole bunch of different modes you can play as. Uh, the more of your friends are playing Atom at the same time. This is actually a really, really cool one. And this is exclusive to uh, the Steam version, Crowd Mode. Uh, the more of your friends that are playing Adam at the same time, the easier the game will be. This reflects the fact that many heroes trying to fight chaos at once. The less of your Adam owning friends are playing Adam, the same time, the more difficult the game will become. Crowd mode becomes how uses a separate high score. With exploration mode, start a new game in exploration mode. It's the mode your characters will uh, is granted a uh, what the hell I can't see now. <laughs> a blessed wand of wishing for you to use. They're we're not el eligible for any high scores, so I'm sure the Wishing Wand does amazing things. Alright, let's go ahead and generate a new character. We're not going to do the tutorial. Let's see what we get here. What is our starting uh, star sign? Now, this is quite random. Uh, the Raven. Harder to trick by deceptions. Messengers will reach you faster. You are faster, plus 10 speed. Companions are more powerful. One initial, plus two initial perception. So that basically means I can pick anything. Some signs are more attuned to certain classes but with this I can just do whatever so we'll go specific class male what do I want to do what do I want to pick we'll go with uh, you know what we're gonna go with a high elf mage so I can kind of show off the mage uh, mechanics because things are a little bit complex with it with a melee character you just have to walk into something to attack it there are, it gets a little bit more complex when you have to go into skills, but all in all, it's not too bad. Uh, you were born as a male high, el high elf. You have golden hair, blue eyes, and a pale complexion. Your parents belong to the middle class. You are, they are average people living in average quarters. Your father is a craftsman of mediocre talent. As a child, your parents uh, cared a lot for you. Despite all circumstances, you enjoyed a happy and fine childhood. In your youth, you enjoyed uh, competition against others to the fullest. You were a very active kid. As a young adult, you were a credit to your family. Your parents supported your plans. Were very understanding. Oh, what fine parents! They tried to help you along in your way by all means at their disposal. Oh, what fantastic parents. If only. If only. At the age of 198, you end your apprenticeship and are now fully learned wizard. Fantastic. So that is always random. You're starting... Uh, backstory is always random. Now, we can choose to randomize our attributes or answer a bunch of questions. Now, the questions are really, really cool, but uh, they do take a while to answer. So I'm going to kind of go through them as quickly as I can. During a night out, one of your friends is mugged or and hurt badly. Do you do what you can to heal his wounds, chase after the attackers to reclaim lost wealth, while others tend to your friend, uh, wait with your friend until help arrives, then chase after the attackers, or go alert the city guards? I'm going to say try to heal his wounds. Your father has apprenticed you to a local smith. Do you accept the humbly accept the position, believing that you this is your chosen calling? Grudgingly accept, not wanting to shame your father, and admittedly refuse. Uh, setting out your own path and alienating your family. Pretend to accept, but plan to run away as soon as the opportunity presents itself. I'm going to say C. Adamantly refuse. When your father took you hunting for the first time, and these are semi-random. Like, these are not going to get entirely the same questions every time, but some of them will be the same. Uh, so you took us hunting for the first time, saw your first deer. Do you kill the deer because your father wants your father to respect you? Feel sorry for the deer, but kill it anyway because your tribe needs the money or needs the food. Kill the deer with a smile on your face and a tingle in your heart. <laughs> now anyway, decide not to kill such a magnificent animal. I'm going to go B. Walking in a street with a gang of men beating a beggar. What do you do? Run to help the beggar, regardless that there's five of them. Quickly walk away so the men don't notice you. Go to help the men beat the beggar. <laughs> Shout to the nearby people to come help the beggar. I'm going to say run to help the beggar. When you fight evil by battling creatures wherever you see them, uh, trying to understand the cause, preventing it by repa repairing the damage everywhere you go, or trying to become a leader and steering your people in another course. I'm going to say B, by trying to learn to understand the cause and prevent it. Your father wants you to help him build a new house for your family, but this work will be very long and very hard, and your father is a harsh taskmaster. At the same time, your uncle, a merchant, wants you to accompany him on a trip to a distant exotic city. Will you help your father with all your skill in order to uh, further the welfare of your family, despite missing out the opportunity to see new marvels and wonders? Help your father with all your skill until your uncle departs, then accompany him. Frain working hard, although you actually only do what is necessary to appear hardworking. 
or accompany your uncle, ignoring your pleas to your father. I'm gonna say B. We'll help as long as we can and then move on. Uh, in cold winters, lots of wood needs to help your keep your home warm. In the vicinity of your home, there's a sacred grove that uh, never touched by your family. Two hours away up a steep hill is a forest where your family used to fetch wood for centuries. Will you fetch fire from the far hills or to keep in line with the traditions of your family, even if this means more hard work for you? Fetch wood from the sacred grove because it's less work and allows you to spend more time with other things. Risk some cold nights because it's too much work to fetch wood from the far hills. You don't want to anger the gods by taking it from the sacred grove. Fetch lots of woods from the far hill during the summer, even at the risk of not having enough time for your other chores because this will allow you to have a large storage for the cold winter nights. I would say, let's go A. As a child, whenever your friends had the idea of going to my graveyard at dark night and asked you to join them, you went along to see how they behaved. Let's kind of skip through this as quickly as I can. In your childhood, slaves uh, were first to work in your neighborhood. Many of the slaves were too young, too old, or too weak to work effectively. The Force Masters mistreated them and abused them all the time. Will you help them personally? Try to lessen the worst of the chores the slaves face and bring them food and water whenever you do can without being noticed. Ignore their pains because bringing them food and water would only prolong their suffering. Ask the Taskmasters if a couple of silver pieces would allow you to take some of the slaves home with you to do the hard work you are obliged to do for your family. Ask the Taskmasters if a couple of silvers would allow you to take some of the slaves home with you. Do the hard work you are obliged to do for your family, and then do those hard chores yourself so the slaves can recover a bit. That's kind of tough. I'm going to say, I'm going to go with D. I'm going to go with D. That sounds nice. You have been training with weapons for some time. Your master believes that you are still too young to be successful as a warrior and wants you to wait for a couple of years before... Uh, you resume your combat training. Will you agree with him and wait a couple of years before resuming your training? Train harder and longer to prove your determination to him. Learn a few dirty tricks from an old friend to make up for your lack of physical talent. Ah! Let's go A. Alright, so now we can finally choose our talents. Now as a mage, I get to choose, or maybe as a high elf, I get to choose two talents. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. So we have a whole range of talents. Let me actually load this back up here. I uh, have a whole range of talents we can pick. Uh, affinity with certain weapons to increase our hit chance. Basic things like aggressive, plus one hit to melee, period. Boon of the family, or boon to the family, start with double money. Being as a mage, I'm probably going to want at least... Speedable, do I want plus one mana? Or to increase my intellect. Plus one learning. Lifespan extended by 30%. Being an elf, I don't think that's really necessary. Plus three power points. Potent aura. Debatable. Plus two to initial skill values. Debatable. Shop price is reduced by 10%. That's also a good one. Here's a nice one, too, I like to go for. Let's go Strong Will. Willpower. I believe that might increase my mana, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go Help. Scroll down. Characters with a mana score of 18 or more will receive one free talent. Yep. Cumulative talents, talent list. But it's not going to say anything too specific, will it? Prerequisite level 1. Alright, let's go back. So we're just going to go... Let's go with wealthy. Wealthy and... Yeah, I think I will... Increase my mana by 1. What is your name? Alright, so here we have the map. Oh jeez, is this really... It's a five deep map. That's pretty shitty, actually. Alright, so here we have the lovely world. This is the tutorial dungeon here. I'm going to use the greater than and lesser than key to kind of enter the dungeon. Ah, yes, and I am a mage, so let me go into my inventory. As a mage, this is your initial equipment, what you have on you that you're wielding. So if you want to say, if I had a helmet, I would hit A. And I would have put a helmet on my head. Uh, let's see. Missile weapons. Tools. 
Like, say, I have a dagger in my inventory, but I want to equip it. So I'd go F for right hand, equip the dagger. We also have some rings. So H, ring of stun resistance, and ring of the fish. Left ring, I, ring of the fish. What else do we have that I might want to equip? Flint and steel, tinderbox, wand of magic missiles, wand of the cold. We have a potion of healing, potent mana, scroll of power, a spellbook of firebolt, and a spellbook of invisibility, and also a ration. And a whole bunch of money. So in order to make use of the spell books, we have to go into our inventory, hit, say, F for Firebolt, and then read it. Uh, we now understand the spell, and we can kind of cast it as we need to. Uh, same thing, let's go ahead and read the invisibility. Now you have to re-read these every now and then after casting them after a certain amount of times, as you will use up the uh, kind of charges, as it were. Invisibility, read that. All right, so now we have an opponent up ahead here. I'm going to use Shift Z to cast my Firebolt. Uses uh, 10 power points, I believe 10 mana. Range of 5. Then cast it in a direction, and that is the Firebolt. So it will shoot 5 squares forward. Let's go ahead and pick this up. Potion of Healing, a scroll labeled Zor for something like that. So let me go ahead and show you the ASCII version here. Shift S, really save the game. May the sun always shine on you. And also I want to see if I can tweak the settings to change the uh, minimap. See if that'll fix it. I'm not sure if it will though. All right. So, let's change it to ASCII. I'll leave the minimap as tiles, though. Okay. So this is how the menu looks like in ASCII. Let's go ahead and restore an old game. I actually have two of them right now. Both of which were elves. Let's go ahead and restore this one, though. So this is what the game looks like in ASCII. It's perfectly, still perfectly playable. You know, it's all up to your own individual preferences. And yeah, my minimap is really screwed up, so I think I'm just going to get rid of it entirely. Because it doesn't stretch. It's supposed to stretch up height-wise, but it's not doing it. Unless I have to increase. Let me try increasing it like much more and see if that fixes that. Whoops. Shift S. Save the game. May the sun shine on you. Yada yada yada. Change settings. Game settings. Back to tiles. Map height. Let's change that to ten. See if that makes a difference. Apply. Exit. Restore old game. And away we go. Yeah, it did actually make the difference, finally. Alright, let's keep going. Alright, we have a little set of items here. A longbow, some arrows, and a wand of cold. I wish to equip the arrows in my missile slot, yes. Pick up the wand of cold. So right here we have our foe. Let's go ahead and apply or apply inventory. Where is it? Wand of cold, one charge. Zap it. So we're gonna zap that guy with it. I can then also go into my inventory under missile weapons M. I can equip the longbow. Exit. And if I'm so inclined, I could blast him with that. But because he is where he is right now. I'm going to blast him with my Firebolt. Alright, now that did reduce quite a bit of my mana, so since he's off to the right now and I couldn't quite hit him with my Firebolt, I'm going to use the bow. So I'm going to hit T, and then T again to fire the bow. And since he's close again, Shift Z, Firebolt, blast his ass! You become more efficient in using the Firebolt spell, plus two. Sweet. The Minotaur seems to panic. He's trying to flee! Kill him! So basically, there's cool little environmental effects that you can kind of occur as well. Like, say, using the Wand of Cold on... Uh, Woohoo! We advanced to level 2 by killing the Minotaur. Hell yes. Choose a skill to improve. My alchemy, my climbing, my concentration, which is actually pretty fair. Uh, my first aid skills. Ooh, first aid skills could definitely use some, or healing could use some 
some work. Let's go with G, healing. Oh, so I had to pick four of them to improve. So we'll go healing, first aid, concentration, and concentration again. Ventriloquism, for what use you would actually find with ventriloquism. So a wand of cold can create like a bridge in water for you, or you can just dive right on in. Now my spellbook of invisibility got drenched. Ooh, and it actually was removed from my inventory, so that was actually a bad idea. So because I chose to dive into the water and not to freeze it, I ended up losing my uh, spellbook of invisibility. Wow, that sucks. Now let's go ahead and pass a couple of turns before we open this door, because I know what's behind it. That will increase our mana back to its full. Go ahead and open the door. Shift Z. Activate Firebolt. And there we go. And everybody is dead. Picked up a knife. Open the door. Got stuck for a second there. And let's go ahead and make our way out of here. So that was the tutorial dungeon. Which we would have been forced to go through, but we just decided to do it for the hell of it. Alright. So now we are going to head over to the first village. Which is this lovely place. Use the... Uh, Shift uh, period again to go into the town. Let's go talk to this guy. Shift C. Communicate. You talk to the village elder. Uh, us village is pestered by critters from the cave in the southeast. Uh, the village carpenter tries to explore the dungeon but was not seen again. I would be great if you could discover his whereabouts. So some of the locations in the quest are the same. Like, you'll always have that beginner dungeon there. You'll always have this village here. You'll even get an achievement for finding it for the first time. No. I don't want to leave the village. Nobody to talk to. Excuse me, I hear the shopkeeper has a sale on. Oh, where is your shopkeeper? I'm looking for him right now. Let's see. Have you seen my little dog? It disappeared near the dark hole on the pass. Me fears it got lost. Would you get it and get it back to me? Hurry, mommy says there's bad things in the cave. Near a dark hole on the pass. Whoa. Farmer turn, uh, tugs the forelock, then hawk spits and turns away. Wow. There we go. Listen. The raider is roaming the... Was it Crouch? The raider is roaming, roaming the countryside. Nasty raider out to, on a pillage. Slay him and receive a nice reward. Bye bye the laws. We'll be friends. We set bounties on the head of criminals, bring him in. No, I don't want to kill him. Stop asking me to murder him. I'm just wondering where the damn shop keeps at. I'm not seeing a uh, shop here at all, sadly, though. Oh, hello, there's a freaking dragon here. Mommy? Yes. Yes, Water Dragon, I am your mother. Love me and join me in combat. I champion, your time will come. Abort! Abort! Abort everything! There's a pretty large building. Ah, there we go. There's a shop. Large ration. Piece of dry meat. Large bat corpse. Let's talk to this guy. 
Feel free to look around and tell me when you notice anything. Any thieves. Alright. Okay, don't forget to pay the 24 gold pieces you owe me. I would love to. How do I do that? That's the question. Hmm. I'm not so sure. So we're going to go over to the question mark up top here. And load up the manual and figure out what the hell, how the hell I pay this guy. Hmm. Here we go. Shops, wishing, and saving. Certain levels of dungeon adventurous merchants have opened up their shops, provide supplies for various bold adventurers to explore the dungeons. Risky environment is made up for by the huge gains possible by selling rare and even magical items to heroes venturing down. If you enter a shop, you'll be expected to look around, barter, and buy stuff. You can leave without buying or selling anything. Remember that at times, shops might contain important or powerful items. Buy something from a shop, you had to pick it up for first. The shopkeeper will block the exit. Seems to be so many thieves around nowadays. I'll wait for you to pay, which can be done by using the P command. Okay, now I know. So P for the large ration. I wish to pay, yes. Thank you. Let's see what else we got around here. Nothing too mind blowing. Alright, so that's the only shop we have here, so let's go ahead and leave the village and head southeast. Actually, let me take a look at something quickly. I feel hungry. Ah, there's that uh, hole. Eat. Iron ration. So apparently there might be a dog in here. There might be a poor defenseless dog. There's my, there's my peep. Alright. Let's go. I will save you, dog. Ooh, we got a shield here. A wooden shield. Go ahead and blast him with a firebolt. Wow. That finished that goblin off right quick. Only took a single arrow. Oh, nothing too mind blowing in here. I'd like to find a staff, that would be nice. Open the door, yes. Kinda speed ourselves along here. Alright, fire the bow again. Congratulations, you advanced to level 3! Yay! Alright. Let's take a look at the help here for a second. Of the skills. Oh, interesting. Backstabbing. Skill increases your chance to hit when your chance a critical hit. Uh, bu bridge building. Allows you to build bridges. Interesting. Interesting. Influences the time required to regenerate lost magic points. So I definitely want to raise my concentration as much as I can. So there's more than just this then. I guess not, just this right now. Let's go, of course, concentration. Because I do want my mana to regenerate much faster. And healing. First aid? Okay. I get to pick one more talent point. Fantastic. Let's see here. Oh, what's up, puppy? You making a nest in my bed? Just like nosing around my blanket right now? <laughs> God, that's adorable. Oh, adorable. Tends to find more gold. 10% carry capacity. Her. Debatable. Debatable. Plus one hit and damage to missile weapons. Yeah, 
Yes. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. We have several items lying here. Let's pick those up, comma. Arrow and rocks. I don't want the rocks. Whoa. Wow, these creatures are weak. I'm not even an archer and I'm freaking taking them out with a single hit. Firebolt! Punk! Got 29 gold pieces from that frog. How the hell it had 29, point, 29 pieces of gold in its gullet? God only knows. But it did. Let's focus my... I want to focus the mini-map on me. So I can actually... Ooh, I can hold left-click on my character and, of course, pull this up. Display any recipes, quest status, uh, mark spells. I can also course right click and move to a position if I'm so inclined or cast spells you can if you want control this completely with your mouse of course that may lead to unfortunate situations like what nearly happened there nearly walked face first into a goblin all right oh I just you slash that cobalt to death Whoops. And he's done. So easy. Keep going, keep going. You can also use the arrow keys to move around if you're so inclined. Oh, nice. The hand axe. I'll take that. Go down level. Shift period. Open up the door, yes. hell is that? A fire beetle. Something tells me that my fire bolt would not be very effective against the fire beetle. Oh, there you are! Oh no! Oh no, I killed the puppy. I'm not sure if that was her puppy, but if it was, I just murdered it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What do we have here? What is that? Search, I believe? Homunculus. No experience fighting that. Shift Z. Firebolt. I am now level 4. Ha ha! Man, I'm leveling up so damn quick. It's insane in the membrane. Increase concentration, first aid, healing, and concentration. What the hell is that thing? A floating eye. You suddenly can't move. So he paralyzed me somehow. What is this? You hear a grinding sound in the distance. An ancient altar of gray granite. A short spear. Oh, hello. No, actually, let's talk with the Goblin Slave Master. Okay. That was weird. A rock with metal veins. 100 silver is lying here. Heap of rocks. It's like the ants are attacking each other or something. Worker ant attacks the giant ant worker. I'm not really sure why they're attacking each other. But they are. Alright. 
I just wanted to finish them off in one go. And we level up again. <laughs> wow, I am just leveling up like crazy. It is ridiculous. So I've now maxed out concentration. First aid. Healing. So actually, here's my haggling, actually, and my, uh, my dodge. Congratulations, you unlocked the following achievement. Well-known wanderer, raised to experience level 5. Fantastic. Let's see what we got over here. Rock with metal veins, rock with metal veins. Shift C. Open the door. I don't have the appropriate key. That's unfortunate. So I nearly got my butt whooped right there by the ants. I'm stuck for a second there. Alright, let's go down to the floor. Open the door. And that goes down again. Whoa! Um, what the hell just happened? Um... Where the fuck am I? Okay, that's weird. That is really weird. My character just disappeared. I don't know what happened. Fuck am I? One second, let me try something. Not while blind. Oh, I think I know what's happening here. Right hand. Torch. Huh. Spill, spills, spells, cough. I have a torch, but it's not using it. It's like I'm completely blind. I have no idea what happened to my character. Like I'm in the darkness or something. Well, there I am. How the fuck I got back here, I don't even know. Oh, is my cap locks on? Frickin' cap locks. So I can see where I am now, how the frack I got there, I don't know. Should be right here, but I can't get out. Okay, this is really weird. It's like my character is invisible or something.
Yeah, my character is invisible. Okay. Wait, did I cast the spell of invisibility or am I just screwing myself over here somehow? I have no idea what the hell happened. You would think that it would make me invisible to my enemies, but not to myself. I have no idea what the hell happened there. Oh well. Kind of screwed. Yeah, let's save and get out of here for now then, since I have no idea what the fuck is going on. <laughs> no idea what the fuck's going on. We're just gonna kinda get out of there for now. So let's try, uh, let's try another quick little game here. Just gonna generate a fast character if I can. Oh great, it's another, uh... Customize the game. Oh yes, you can customize the game as well. Turn off corruption, turn off hunger, monster difficulty, of course, game mode, permadeath or not. All that good stuff. Let's just go with fate. Random. A male gnome. Random. Wealthy. Let's see. Strong kicker. More easily disarm traps. Carry capacity. 2% more experience? Ah, no, no. Plus one to hit melee. The name is Blarg, and Blarg. Inventory, history. So what am I? I am a male gnome merchant. Oh god. I am doomed. I have a short sword. Scroll of increased melee damage. I have quite a few scrolls I start off with. Holy shit. Iron ration and 2,559 gold pieces. Jesus. That is ridiculous. That skill is used automatically. So, of course, I can go through the beginner dungeon once again. I have to go to town, it seems, to get the quest for that one dungeon. There we go, communicate. We got that quest now. No, I don't want to swim. Swimming ruins my freaking scrolls and potions and shit. What do we have here? A melon. Iron rations, 55G. Bless large rations. No. Uncursed. Huh. Uncursed large ration. Uh, well, I would hate to have a cursed large ration, now wouldn't I? Alright, let's pay this guy. A blessed large ration. Of course, I want to pay. And the large ration. I have 2,000 freaking gold. It's not like I can't afford it. Alright, let's leave the village. Let's go check out this dungeon. Of course, this dungeon is like the last one. It's kind of the same. Seen the hearthling? I have not seen the hearthling, no. Punk. Uncursed sling. There we go. Oh, it's hobgoblin. 
Do I have any interesting skills? No, I do not. Oh, I'm probably screwed. Probably screwed. You know what? Let's actually make use of some of this stuff then. Scroll of increased melee damage. Scroll of power. And then I go through and slaughter all these bastards. Oh dear god, it's a fucking monster zoo. It's a bloody uh, Dungeons of Dreadmore style monster zoo. Oh god. Gemology, haggling. Well, let's go first aid. So the kind of skills you unlock in the beginning depend on what class you select. Survival. And I guess haggling. And we level up again to level 3. Wow, so quick. So quick we are leveling up here. This is hilarious. Oh, what else do I want here? First aid is already as high as it's going to get. Haggling, herbalism, I guess. Mining. Survival. Mining. Good enough for me. Talent. Affinity with swords. I guess. I swear to god, just off this freaking monster zoo, I could probably gain a couple levels in of myself. Let's back off for a second here and do a little bit of healing. Advance to level 4. <laughs> well, that's fast. First aid. Increase that as much as I can. Haggling. Metallurgy. Mining. Good enough. A small shield. Inventory. Left hand. Small shield. What else do I have? Oh no. I want to carry that fucking corpse around with me. No, oh, thank you. Drop it. Whistle. Sure. My health is still kind of holding in there, barely. If it wasn't for my great dodging, I'd probably be so boned right now. Level 5, wow. Wow, how am I still alive even? Seriously. I should not be alive right now. Apply the first aid skill. Uh, I got a torch and a jade ring. hell is that? Yeah, I can just sit here and heal all day if you want. So yeah, this is like the best ever. Just barely surviving it, but I'm getting so much experience.
Got him. Cobalt. What did they drop here? We got clothes, sandals, a blessed hobgoblin corpse. What do we have in here? Inventory. A blessed hobgoblin corpse. Eat it. Does not sit well with you. Well, it was blessed. So, you know. I would have cooked it, but... I didn't exactly have any... Well, I suppose I had a flint and tinder and such, and I could have made a quick campfire or something, but yeah. Wow, so this going actually worked out quite well. I'm not going to go too much longer, though, as I've already gone quite a... Quite a bit with this. Another short sword. Alright. Let's go down to the next floor and die a horrible death. And then we will move on. I wish I, I wish I knew what the hell happened to that wizard though. That was really weird. It's like I opened a door and just suddenly got chucked off the map. I suppose it is possible that I... What the fuck? Suddenly a stone block hits your head. You die. Oh wow, I hit a trap and died. <laughs> well, I guess that's convenient. That's convenient. I was going to stop anyway. So, goddamn. That's not too bad. <laughs> oh, fail, fail, fail. So regardless, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. Have yourselves a great one, and I will see you all another time. Dragon out.